so I ran through the installation manual and the spec sheets for all of the uh, Hoy Miles products, as well as did a refresher on the competition, which I would say is AP Systems and Enphase, um, two comparable micro inverter manufacturers. I wrote down some notes. I'm going to go through those notes and kind of what stands out to me um, so that you don't have to read through all of those. When you're doing a comparison on Enphase AP Systems, and Hoy Miles. When you're looking at the peak efficiency, communications, startup voltage, warranty, there's nothing in here that's like, oh, this is an inferior product, it's cheap. It's comparable with everything out there. Um, as far as the product itself, like physical inspection, it's high quality and I like all the features and it's easy to put together. Uh, efficiencies, uh, peak efficiency is just under 97%, depending on which model you have. Um, AP Systems a little over 97 and, and face as well. Um, communications is Wi-Fi. Uh, it's uh, 2.4 um, uh, gigahertz Wi-Fi um, from the DTU to the actual Wi-Fi antenna on the microinverter. That's similar to AP Systems. Um, and phase uses a different technology called Powerline uh, Communication. Warranty is 12 years to 25 years. You can extend it if you want to. All the other manufacturers are 10 to 25 years. Um, so right, right in line. So I'm pleasantly impressed with the quality and the performance of this product, like on paper, looking at the spec sheet and the installation manual. They make three different products. They make a one-in-one, -one, a two-in-one, and a four-in-one. So this, this right here is the one in one. This is the four in one. And they also make a two in one. I thought this was cool because when I'm looking over the spec sheets, for instance, the one in one comes in a 300 watt, a 350 watt and a 400 watt. That way you can take the appropriate micro inverter for the appropriate panel and you can optimize the performance of that panel. Let me explain. Some of the competitors, they might offer a microinverter that has a peak output of say 295 watts. And you pair that with a 400 watt panel, you're not going to get that peak performance out of that panel on really good, cool, sunny dates. So if you wanna maximize production and eliminate clipping, it, it's really easy to do that with these high output models. Another thing that is crazy looking over the spec sheet, if you do the one-in-ones, um, well, in general, you can put these on a 30 amp branch circuit. So that means a one-on-one, -on -one, a one-in-one, you would be able to put about 19, 19 of those inverters on a circuit. From a design standpoint, from a design standpoint, that's like a 950 volt DC circuit if you were doing a generic string inverter. So on one branch circuit, you have 19 solar panels. It's crazy. That's actually really cool. Typical is somewhere around maybe 10 to 13 uh, panels. So um, another thing that I thought was really cool is the four in one, that model that I have is a 2000 watt inverter. So you can plug in four 500 watt solar panels. Um, not even that, um, as far as stacking ratio or oversizing, we talked about making the inverter oversized so that you don't lose any production from the solar panel. But a lot of times in the solar industry, they'll, actual, they'll actually undersize the inverter for the solar panel. Very common and it's not a bad design. In a lot of situations, it makes sense financially um, as far as what the cost of the system is compared to the total yield. So you can stack it, stacking ratio, 135%. So for instance, you could put like a 390 watt uh, panel on like the 300 watt version of the one in one. And that's, a, that's a acceptable design. That being said, a 2000 watt four in one micro inverter with a large 500 plus watt panels. And then you can also put three of those in a branch circuit. So you, you can have like a six, somewhere around a six or seven kilowatt system 
on a single branch circuit on a 30 amp breaker. On the electrical side of things, that's extremely simple and easy to install. I really like that on the design side. So definitely a massive benefit uh, to these microinverters. Let's talk about communications. From everything that I've seen, reading reviews and working with these systems and other systems, the issue with microinverters is communications. You can't take an ethernet and plug it into a microinverter on the roof. With a general string inverter that's on the side of your home, you can just plug in ethernet. It gets power from the solar panels, it's hardwired to your internet, and you get very reliable, clean data. Now, this device, the DTU, can be plugged into the internet, but it's going to communicate from a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna on the actual microinverter. And that's how data from the roof is going to get to the DTU, which is going to get to your cell phone. This is where I see most of the issues. Wi-Fi is extremely accessible, but it's also one of the less reliable and more finicky um, communication systems that we have out there. I'm testing out a new model of this microinverter, the HMS. And from what I've seen is they, they didn't upgrade on the communication system. What it looks like to me is they found the best, the best 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi communication possible. Yeah, they're calling it sub 1G. And what they're claiming is that this Wi-Fi connection is able to extend about twice as far and it's able to deal with significantly more interference. So fair warning, if you're installing this on a metal roof or a tile roof, you might have some connection issues. And that's not a knock on this product, that's just a common issue with microinverters. But what I've seen from Hoy Miles is they're, they found the best hardware possible to get the best communication possible that's the most reliable. I, I may have mentioned earlier, but with grid tied inverter systems, you have to connect them to the internet. You have to establish um, the location, the grid profile, and put in all this data so that the microinverter knows how to interact with the grid in your local area. And it makes sense. It's just the rules. It's how you have to do it. Um, it was really easy to just have Hoy Miles create me an account, log into that account, fill out all the information, and start the system up. The only part of the process that was a little bit difficult was connecting to the Wi-Fi. And I've kind of broken that down in those steps for commissioning it on how you take your phone, connect to your Wi-Fi, take your phone, connect to the DTU's local network, and then go through the settings and, and configure it for that uh, plant or site or the install um, that you've set up. I think this is a great system for uh, DIY. All right, so the system is on right now and producing electricity. I ended up taking the solar panel off the wall so I could get a little bit better sun exposure. I also ended up running an ethernet connection to the DTU. My honest opinion with this system is hardwire it. And I'll say that with any inverter system, it's just a better product for the customer. It's more reliable, it updates faster, um, you get better data. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe and watch for some more content on Hoy Miles and other products that I'm checking out.